peace be upon you, peace be unto you, peace be with you as I greet you in the name of Jesus, uh, family. We just thank God for tonight. Um, we're going to get right into the word of God. Thank God for this class because really, an hour is really not that long. And actually, it's not a full hour. So we're going to get right into the word of God. Thank God for you that are already on the platform. And we're going to be faithful with our time tonight. Let's pray and let's just trust God as we as we pray for God to center us, to settle us, to draw our minds in, uh, whatever we may be carrying emotionally, uh, whatever we may be carrying as far as our concerns or even worries, whatever the case may be. We're giving it to God right now. Uh, so we don't want anything to distract us from getting into the word of God tonight. God is able. With God, all things are possible. God loves us. God is with us. His present is present right now. His presence is present right now. So our, <clears throat> our job is to be right now present to his presence. That is to be purposely aware of the fact that God is with us right now in a very powerful way. And so, Lord, we acknowledge you right now. I thank you for my brothers and sisters, I thank you for the students on the line now. Thank you for those that will be those that are on their way. Thank you for keeping them uh, safe as they come to the platform. We want to just give you praise and thanks and worship because your mercy endures forever. We want to give you thanks and praise for the power of the Holy Spirit, for you sent him to guide us into all truth. And you said, your word is truth. So, Father, we yield to that anointing, the Holy Spirit, who cannot lie, but guides us into all truth. So, in fact, Lord, we invoke the presence of the spirit of truth right now to communicate truth, the word, with such clarity and precision that they will become handles for our faith, forces of faith forces of righteousness, our foundation, our strength to bolster us, to embolden us, to hold us, um, to strengthen us while we're in the waiting room and believe in God for the changes that we seek for our lives, for the lives of those around us, to help us to hold us in every way, form, or fashion. God, I pray tonight that you're your word would have free course. I pray that you would grant clarity of thought, precision of expression. I pray, Father, that you would grant unto us the anointing to give and the anointing to receive. Yes, I pray that those two anointings would interact with one another so that there would be an anointing to produce. I pray for all of us that we will not just be mere hearers of the word, but doers thereof because it is then that we become active recipients of what you have provided for us in this great plan of redemption. We receive your anointing for tonight. I pray that you will confirm your word with signs following. Not just the word, but the deed. Pray that you would be in my mind, in my thinking, in my mouth, in my speaking, in my prayers as I pray, and in the power of your working. Lord, heal the sick tonight deliver from emotional bondage, bring direction and guidance and answers to the troubles that people face, solutions. We thank you that you can do all that in a matter of moments beyond our ability and beyond our understanding and Holy Spirit of God, you have liberty to move. We bind in the name of Jesus, every opposing force. We thank you that angels are surrounding us right now, that the power of the Holy Spirit is in our presence. Thank you for the blood of Jesus that cleanses us and washes us, hallelujah, from all sin and stains. And Father, we thank you that every obstacle is has been thwarted and removed between us and you so that we could hear with our second set of ears, that is the ears of our spirits. I pray that your word would fall on good ground. Holy Ghost, teach the book of Ephesians tonight. Take us into the deep places and the deep mysteries of the book of Ephesians. Feed us with the milk, the meat, the water, the wine of the book of Ephesians, the bread of the book of Ephesians. 
all the different themes and ideas of who we are in Christ. We thank you for doing this. Father, I acknowledge that, that you have a right to ignore us for things done and things left undone. But how we give you praise and honor tonight that your property is mercy and that always glory to God. And so therefore, in the words of your servant, David, let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us according as we hope in thee. And I add, let your mercy be upon us tonight, every lady, every man, every student, in every and any way that we need it, and in ways and details that we just don't know how to pray, but according to your will and your way. We thank you for the fire of the Holy Spirit burning up the works of the enemy. And Lord, I thank you, Father, that there is a special favor released tonight upon each individual on this platform, being at the right place at the right time, that, that favor is going to be released in a fresh way. I thank you for that. Yes, thank you for, a, for fresh favor. Yes, Lord, being released to us and within us and upon us and around us in a fresh and tangible way. And all these other things, Lord, that we didn't cover in detail, we thank you, Lord, that for the prayer requests, that are in the minds and the hearts of your people tonight, you are hearing them as we spend time in your word. It may be even before we put it in the chat, you've already began to work. Even those things that seem like absolutely Im impossibilities, we thank you for working. And, and we ask these things in the name of the one by whose stripes we are healed. We speak of Jesus, the very Christ. Amen. And amen, glory to God. We bless the name of the Lord. Praise you, Father. Glory to your excellent name, for you are good, for your mercy endures forever. Thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit. We acknowledge the Ruach HaKodesh. We give you praise, glorify you. We magnify you. Even when we don't feel like it, we praise you because praise has power. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You inhabit the praises of your people. Glory to God. Praise you for a personal walk with you, relationship, but praise you even as a weapon of warfare. Did you hear me, my brother? Even as a weapon of warfare. Thank you, Lord, in the morning. Thank you, Lord, in the noonday. Thank you, Lord, in the midnight hour. We bless your holy name. We thank you for impossibilities become possible, becoming possible. Thank you for making ways out of no ways. Hallelujah to God. Let's get right into reading. I promised last week that we would start with reading. And let me just tell you, class, um, we're not going to try to overfeed us uh, or overstuff us. Okay, we got a plan. We have our planned manuscript, our notes, and all those things. But we are going to do our best to engage to engage with the leadership of the Spirit. That's that's our prayer, uh, because the Lord will emphasize things that we need at this moment. Amen. He He will emphasize what we need to hear at this moment. That's how much He loves us. So we'll begin reading. All right, we're going to read the first. We're still in the first chapter, and my brothers and sisters, students of the Word, we are still in the overview. Uh, still in the overview elements of the book of Ephesians. So we're just going to take it a step at a time. Um, and we're going to dive in and swim in this beautiful book. So I'm going to be reading from the NIV, the New International Version of, of the Bible, uh, Ephesians chapter one. So this is part of the class. This is part of the session. Let the word of God wash over you. Like a, like a warm shower bath, let it feed your spirit. Eat it as you're listening to it. If you're reading along with me, then feed on the word. If you're just listening, let it minister to you. Let it minister life to you. The word of God is life. It's powerful. It will heal your body. 
as you're listening to it. It will give you direction. It will comfort your spirit. It will give you wisdom and knowledge. So that's what we're going to do. Now, before, just right before we read, let me just give you this one statement. The, the sessions are called, and I have to keep repeating this for those new ones who are coming on, but also <clears throat> teaching is reminding, teaching is repeating, and good teaching is that which is taught by repetition. And this is how we learn it. This is how we get it because we keep on and on and on because it, the teaching will open the eye <clears throat> and open the ears until the momentum of faith says, I got it. <clears throat> and I want, you, I want you to be encouraged while you're on this platform. Excuse me. <clears throat> while you're on the platform, <clears throat> listening to the word, God is dealing with your affairs. Let me just say that again. While you are on the platform, in this session, in this class, in these classes, I want you to be encouraged that God is dealing with your issues. You know why? Because you're giving God time. And then you wouldn't be here if you weren't, if you didn't have some kind of spiritual hunger and God responds to spiritual hunger. So whatever your concerns are, trust God. He knows it. But we're in the presence of his word. We're in the presence of his spirit. The Bible says where two or three are gathered together in his name, he's in the midst. So be encouraged. Keep your expectation turned on. I want you to hear me, okay? This whole session is going to be, this, the, all of these sessions are going to be reading for feeding, exhortation, teaching, uh, preaching, prayer, all of the above. This we're just we're just getting into the word. So let me just make this statement. The book of Ephesians, the session is called a journey the book of Ephesians, a journey into the fullness of God. Now, I'm not going to read again. Well, let me just read the one verse from Ephesians chapter 3 which which is which supplies the thought behind a journey into the fullness of God. And really in Paul's prayer, remember we we kind of given a little review last week. I talked about we kind of ended. Uh, well, we talked about a little bit that there are two major prayers that Paul prays. the one, The first one is in Ephesians chapter one, okay. And we'll get into that uh, later on and explain what the prayer means. You know the different details. But that first prayer, which is in Ephesians chapter one, and again, if you need me to repeat something, just unmute and ask me. If you need to me, me need me to repeat a phrase or give you a scripture reference or whatever the case may be, if there's a, a question with the subject matter at hand, I would rather for you to unmute so that you can catch it. I know you can read this later, but some uh, listen to it later, you know. But sometimes maybe they. they that might not be the case or you want it right now. So just unmute and say, can you say that again or say it in a different way, whatever the case may be, just unmute. I might even, I might ask a question. So if you, if you feel like you know the answer, just unmute and shout it out. Okay, so the first prayer is in Ephesians chapter one and the prayer is for revelation or enlightenment, for understanding, for divine illumination. The second prayer is for power, for, for, Paul prays in the, in the third chapter of the book of Ephesians for the power to be able to accomplish ability, divine enablement for accomplishing. You know, there's one thing to be called to a purpose. It's another thing to have the ability to fulfill that purpose. There you have it. And so Paul in Ephesians chapter three, and I'm going to be using all kinds of translations, probably the main ones, you know, my two main ones is King James, New King James, will also deal with the NIV, which is what we're going to read from today. And sometimes uh, the New Living Translation, and I'll let you know other translation as we as we use them. But Ephesians chapter three, I'm not going to read the whole prayer as we did last week, but Ephesians chapter three, Paul prays the prayer. He says, for this cause, I bow my knees. It begins at verse 14. So you know, for your reference, Ephesians chapter three, verse 14. Uh, yeah, beginning with verse 14. And then he says in verse 18, that we may be able to comprehend with all saints. This is King James, that we may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height 
And this is referring to the love of God. So in other words, the way we are filled with the fullness of God is having a profound, deep revelation and understanding and experience. That's a key word now of the love of God, God's love, because God's love will heal your soul. It will comfort your wounded emotions. It will heal scars from the past. And this is one of the ways you counsel yourself. When you, when the devil is trying to tell you, you are worthless, you are less than, when you feel hopeless and helpless and hapless, you just say to yourself, God loves me. Then tell the Lord, thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you for your unconditional love. That will counsel you on the spot. And this is why he prayed that prayer, because this is the basis of being filled with the fullness of God. In fact, Romans chapter five talks about that Paul said that we are, we, that the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. That's the foundation. Verse nine, verse 19, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. What does that mean? It must be a revelation. That's natural human knowledge. In other words, God has to give it to you. And, we, and, when, and when we find our place, when we find ourselves in the place and the sacred space where God is, of course, that's his word, that's in prayer, that's in praise. God will reveal his love to us. And there are always new layers of his love. So it's not going to just be all of a sudden at one moment, you got it completely. No, there are levels. Here a little, there a little, but the constant ongoing revealing revelation, illumination of God's love, unconditional love for us. And he says that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now I'll tell you right off the bat that listen, that is a deep statement. Filled with the fullness of God? Is that possible in this lifetime? Well, Paul prays it and that's a mystery. We're not even going to be able to exhaust all the meaning of what that means. Okay, so there you go. Then remember, we dealt with three key words in the first chapter. Three key words in the first chapter of Ephesians. That's God. That's grace. That's glory. We'll define those later, but simply put, God, that's the presence. All this has to do with God ministering to his human creation ministering to human to to humankind because there would be nothing without god so remember everything begins with god so that's your main subject uh genesis chapter 1 verse 1 in the beginning god that's it god is all, always there in the beginning before your problem god is in the beginning before your sickness god is in the beginning before the devil, God is in the beginning. Before everything and anything, anything and everything, God is there in the beginning. And then grace, that's his unmerited favor, undeserved gift. He does, Grace is a one-sided act of God. God does for you, listen carefully, get this, get this now. God does for you what you cannot do for yourselves. Uh-oh, that's a praise right there. That's a praise right there. God's grace, his favor. And then, you know, he opens his letters with grace and peace. Well, peace comes after grace because you can't have peace without grace. In fact, all of the blessings of God are, are acts of grace and really manifestations of his love. See how everything is interconnected? Okay. And then glory. And I love that word because that's a powerful word. Doxa in Greek, kabod in Hebrew, and it means, listen carefully now, it means, it means the manifestation of God's attributes, his characteristics, all that God is. In other words, glory is not just what God talks about, but glory is what God manifests. Yes, please. It's what he demonstrates. It's what he shows. And don't you know, let me give you this right now so every time we make our statements, we can come back to this reality. 
the book of Ephesians is God's message to the church. And what makes the church? The power of the Holy Spirit. Let me say that again. We're going to read, Brother Roger. We're going to read, Sister. Sister Lady T. We're going to read. We're going to read. But the, the, the book of Ephesians is a message to the church. And when I say the church, I'm not talking about just the local assembly. I'm talking about the Greek word ecclesia. And what does that mean? It means an ingathering of those who have been called out of spiritual death into spiritual life, spiritual darkness into spiritual light, spiritual slavery into spiritual freedom. That is the church, the ecclesia, ek meaning out of, kaleo to call, sia once. The church is is the assembly of called out ones. You might as well tap yourself on the chest right now where you are. This is class, this is session, but it's also church and say, I am a called out one. Good God. What does that mean? He called you out of something, here's the church, into something else. He called you out of something. That's right. That's right. God's glory is the manifestation of God. Oh, okay. God's glory. That's a good question. I, I don't mind repeating that. God's glory is the manifestation. Because I actually didn't finish. Thank you. God's glory is the manifestation of all that God is. You could put a period right there. It is the manifestation of all that God is. And I add, in his stunning, unlimited perfection. That's the glory of God. You're welcome. In fact, in the book of John, Jesus' first miracle was to turn water into wine at the great marriage party. And John said, this was the first demonstration of his glory. Yeah, yeah. And that's what the church is. Oh my goodness, I'm jumping ahead of myself. But when we get to chapter three, you're going to understand the purpose of the church. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, may, if, yes. May I interrupt you? I'm sorry. Yes, please. That's okay. The book of Ephesians is the message to the church. And then you said it's on gathering of those who have been called out ones, called out of spiritual darkness, called out of what? Spit called out good good question again this is that's what I want you to do so the church is the is the ingathering or the assembling of called out ones and it's three main calling out he called us out of something into something else called us out of spiritual death into spiritual life spiritual darkness into spiritual light spiritual slavery or spiritual bondage into spiritual freedom or spiritual liberty. See, because true freedom begins on the inside, in our spirits. And that's, that's what the true church is. So you could be a member of a local assembly and still not be the true church. The true church, what is the church? It is the man, the woman, the boy, the girl, listen to this, Sister E, in whom God is present. There you go. Because when we invite the Lord in our, in, into our lives, when we confess him as Lord, when we say, Lord, forgive me, save me, however we pray that prayer, God performs the greatest miracle that we could ever experience in our entire lifetime. He removes from our spirits the nature of sin and he replaces it with the nature of God. So we're going to give so many different aspects and definitions of what it means to be the church. Another way to say this is that the nature of God is living in us. What makes the church the church? The Holy Spirit. Now, let me tell you something. We got to get to reading because we're going to go to the book of Acts. So tonight is just reading. I, I talked, I talked, I talked, but tonight is reading. We're going to deal with the first chapter of Ephesians from the NIV. And then 
I want if you have your Bibles, I want you to go ahead and find your place in Acts chapter 19, because what we're going to read tonight is how the church at Ephesus, and really it wasn't just one local place, it was kind of like in a it was a, a, a region, an area. And the book of Ephesians is the result of a major move of God. It was the result of a revival. And what, and also, listen, listen, revival begins with spiritual hunger. So we got a few people on the, on the platform tonight. Somebody must be hungry. And I'm going to tell you, when you are hungry for God, when you are hungry for his word, God will move heaven and earth to get to you. Y'all don't hear me right now. Yes, he will. When you're hungry to know his word, when you're hungry to know God, he will respond to you. Your spiritual hunger to know God after his spirit and by his word, through his word, will attract the presence of God like magnet to a metal. Amen. All right. Stop me again if you need to ask a question. So Ephesians is theology. And this is a statement I'm going to repeat. Ephesians is theology originating in the mind of God regarding you and me. I want to say that again. The book of Ephesians is theology. Theology means the study of God or the study of the word. The study of God, and really, how do you know God? Through his word and by his spirit. Theology, Ephesians is theology on fire, originating in the mind of God regarding you and me. So God literally took Paul and put Paul in the mind of God before the foundation of the world. That's what the book of Ephesians, the book of Ephesians is born from, from the knees of prayer. Good God. Hallelujah. All right. I'll repeat a lot of these statements over and over again. All right. Reading. Ephesians chapter one, the NIV. The, the New International Version. Paul, this is the whole chapter one. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God to God's holy people in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus. Right there, that's a mouthful. Verse two, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly places or in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Now, let me stop real quick. Verse three, NIV says, praise be to the God. But let me tell you what's before, before the, the word praise is really manifested because King James and New King James says, blessed be the God and Father. So I need you to know that the praise does not start first. The blessed God starts first. See, because God did something before we do something. So it really, start, the book of Ephesians really opens up with a statement about God's name. The blessed God. What, is, what does that mean? The God who is worthy to be praised. And you can't say that God is worthy to be praised unless we are given reasons why he is worthy to be praised. Let me tell you something right now. The book of Ephesians is about God making the first move. And then our praise is a response to the first move he made. His first move was the grace of God. Our faith is a response to his grace. You don't mind if I get beside myself a little bit because I'm telling you it's hard. It is very hard for Minister Derek to remain passive when we get in this book. So pray for me, please. All right. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him, meaning Christ, before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless 
in his sight. There's your key word now, in love, four key words, God, grace, glory, love. In love, now NIV puts a period to that statement, blameless in his sight. King James kind of continues the thought, but both are right. Blameless in his sight, period. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. I want you to know that God takes pleasure in you. Come on, daughter. Come on, son. He takes pleasure in you. Wait, can I just say this? God enjoys your company. Uh-oh, church time. Hands going all up all over the house. We give you praise, Lord. We need to hear that. You heard me, my brother. You heard me, my sister. We need to hear that because sometimes we are so guilt-minded, so condemnation-minded, so negative past-minded that we forget God enjoys us. That's why we were created. The devil likes to paint the picture of a God who's standing over heaven waiting for us to mess up so he can pounce on us and judge us harshly and beat us up and put some sickness and disease on us or get us into an accident and the list goes on. Those are lies from the devil. It is his pleasure to bless us. All right, no comment. We're gonna continue to read. To the praise of his glorious grace, verse six, which he has freely given us in the one he loves, capital O. Verse seven, in him we have redemption. Through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. See, this is the list of all we have now that he lavished on us, verse eight, with all wisdom and understanding. He made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he purposed in Christ. I almost want to sing this because remember, this is theology set to music. To be put into effect, verse 10, to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In him, we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him. Listen to this, who works out everything. Brother G, this is your encouragement. Who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will. In order that we, who were the first to put their to put our hope in Christ, that's talking about the Hebrews or the Jews, might be for the praise of his glory. And you, that's the Gentile community, because really in Christ, we all become one. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, when you believed you were marked in him, I like the way King James puts it, puts it we were sealed in him. We, oh, well, here we go. When you, when you believe you were marked in him with a seal. So, so I like the way NIV puts that word in there. King James just says you were sealed with the Holy Spirit. I like that mark because to be called and to be chosen means that you were marked out for a special purpose. Come on, we're going to turn this into a prayer and a declaration right now. Put your hand on your chest right now and say, I am marked out right now for a special purpose. Say it again. Say, I am marked out. Make it personal. I am marked out for a special purpose. You know, I got to add it and then you are sealed. And guess what? And that means now I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm going to say this in some broken English, but you get the message. You are marked out for a special purpose. And then you were sealed with the promise of the Holy spirit. You know what that means? Can't nobody do nothing about it, including the devil.
Ooh, woo. Verse 14. Who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. See, we're going to examine the word praise over and over again. For this reason now, for this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, here's his first prayer. I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better, so that you may know him better better. This just tastes so good. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know, there goes the word know again, the hope to which he has called you. Hope is for the future. I'm come, I come to tell you tonight. Now, remember, we're dealing with an overview. That's why I'm kind of just reading. We're just reading tonight making comments along the way, but just we're reading. Sometimes it's just going to be pure reading. Other times we're going to take a a chunk and, and exhort it and teach it. We're reading tonight, making comments along the way. I pray that the eyes of your heart, verse 18 again, may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you. I want you to tap yourself on the chest and say, I have a future in Christ. See, I don't care what you have accomplished. I don't care what blessings have already come your way. I don't care how young you are. I don't care how old you are. I don't care the trouble you may be in right now or the impossibilities that may be facing you, the direction that you need that you don't seem to have at the moment. I'm telling you, based on this verse, you have a future in Christ and he is working his will for you, in you, and through you. You don't mind if I give God thanks for that just for a second. I can't help myself. Lord, I give you praise that I have a future in you, that you are working your purpose, your plan in me and through me, and you never stop working until we come to that place. And I decree and declare over every lady and man and student on this platform that they are immortal until their purpose is fulfilled on this earth that the devil can't even stop us. He may try to block us, but he cannot stop us in the name of Jesus. He'll try to deceive us into thinking uh, that he can stop us, but he cannot. And I say it again, he cannot, the devil cannot, the devil cannot. We got to get to the book to the book of Acts. We're going to get there. Amen. Because prayers are going to be answered when we start reading this 19th chapter. Watch what I say. I pray that the eyes of your heart, verse 18, may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, that's the church, and his incomparably great power. In other words, there's no other power that can be compared with God's power. His And his incomparably great power for us who believe, that power is the same as the power mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above, not just above, but far above all rule and authority. You should look at somebody that might be next to you right now, or just tell yourself and say, you don't even know who you are. Hallelujah to God. You know what? It's, it's just to turn to your invisible neighbor who's sitting next to you. Just imagine someone is next to you right now and say, don't you even try to mess with me because you don't even know who I am. There you go. That's the way to say it. That's right. That's right. Uh, the book of Ephesians is about God introducing you to you. We've been introduced to God, but you know the power of the Holy Spirit is so that we are introduced to ourselves because most of the church, don't tell my papa, I said, don't tell my father, I said this because he, he told me, he said, don't ever say most because you don't know most. But if you don't tell him I said that, if you don't tell him I'm saying this, then I'm going to say it. 
most of the church does not know who they are in Christ. And that's why there has to be so many other extracurricular activities and that we have to somehow build a theology for a lot of build a theology around the lack of success when God has called the church to be a people of power. But we settle. Let me tell you the church, the book of Ephesians is about not settling for anything less than God's best. Let me say it again. The book of Ephesians is a message to the church to not settle for anything less than God's best. Let that marinate for a moment. Verse 21, far above all rule, not some, all rule and authority, power and dominion and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. Can I come? Can I tell you something right now? If there's anything in your life that is contrary to the will of God, guess what? It has a name. And whatever you're dealing with has a name. That sickness, that rash has a name. Well, guess what? The name of the Lord is far above that name. Did you hear me now? This is warfare time. This is for this will give the devil a black eye right now. And God placed, listen, far above all rule and authority, verse 21, all rule and authority, power and dominion in every name, every name, every name, every name, every name, every, I can't stop saying it, every name. If it has a name, Think about it. The name of Jesus is above that name. And God placed uh, uh, and every name that is named. See, the doctor will tell you there's a name for that. Your banker will tell you that there's a name for that. Credit cards will tell you there's a name for that. Well, the name of the Lord is above any name that can be named. We need a revelation of this now. And God placed, verse 22, and God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. Man, we could have a party with this now. Now, quickly, I can't believe the time already. Quickly go to the book of Acts. Book of Acts chapter 19. I'm going to also read this from the NIV. We're going to do reading. We got, the, it's the foundation, the reading. We get so much light just from the reading, didn't we? So we're going to go to the book of Acts now. We, 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 we're not going to get through the whole chapter, but we'll read a few of these verses, but enough to know that this is how the book of Ephesians or the churches, churches, plural, at Ephesus, because it wasn't just one church. It was in a province in Ephesus. So this is how the churches at Ephesus began from a move of God, from a Bible. And remember, the background for all the letters that Paul writes starts in the book of Acts. So now we're going to get to the origin of the book of Ephesians. I'm telling you, this is a powerhouse. Acts chapter 19 from the NIV, beginning with verse 1. Now, if you see above, if you have the NIV and any really, I think any translation that you have is going to say Paul in Ephesus. This is how this whole thing started. Listen to the flow of this power. While Apollos, Apollos was a, an African teacher. He was from, um, um, where's, the, where's the place? I'll tell you later. I can't think of it right now. He was from Alexandria. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He's from Alexandria, and that's in the continent, the African continent. And he was an excellent, excellent teacher. While, while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus. There he found some disciples. What is a disciple? A disciplined student. See, if, you're, if, you're, if you are going to be taught, then you have to position yourself as a learner. That's what a disciple is, a disciplined student, a disciplined student. 
counsel yourself right now and say, I am a disciplined student. Come on, say it again. Say, I am a disciplined student. Okay. So in verse two, let me, let me, for the continuity, let me read quickly, starting with verse one again. While Paul was, while, while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus. There he found some disciples and asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believe? What makes the church? The Holy Spirit. What makes a church a church? The Holy Spirit. Why is the church called the ecclesia, the called out ones? Because it was the Holy Spirit. It was God by the power of the Holy Spirit that called us from darkness to light, death to life, and bondage to freedom. He asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believe? They answered, no, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Remember we just read in the, in the first chapter of Ephesians about being sealed with the Holy Spirit? So verse three, so Paul asked, well, then what baptism did you receive? John's baptism, they replied. And remember in the gospel of John, well, let me just read. Paul said, John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. Listen, when we go through Ephesians, we're going to have to talk about the power of the Holy Spirit. That's your, that is your, that's your, that's your backup power. That's your mainstay power. That's your inner power. That's your potential power. That's your power power. That's your inner dynamite, your dynamism, your dynamo. Glory to God. Paul said J John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. He told the people to believe in the one coming after him, that is, in Jesus. Well, I heard John say in the gospel of John that I baptize you with water. But there is one coming after me whose shoes I'm not even worthy to tie or unloose. He's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with power. See, that's the miracle. Because a human being can take you down in the water, but only God can fill you with the Holy Ghost. A human being can preach the gospel to you, but only the power of the Holy Ghost can change your heart from the inside out. Yep. Listen, a human being can give you medicine and take you through some surgery and operations, but only God can truly heal you. That's why I, when we read this, now you're going to know my burden for praying for the sick and for trusting God for the miraculous. If I prayed and nothing ever happened, I would still pray because the fact is I've seen it happen and I know the word of God says that God is a healer. And I don't want to settle for anything less than God's best. So if people tell you, well, God doesn't heal today and he doesn't do that, then every hospital and every doctor and every bit of medicine and every surgery is a house of rebellion. Hospitals and medicine are doing God's business. And I tell people all the time, take your medicine if you have to take it. Go deal with what you have to do at the hospital, but pray first because you just might come up into the presence of God and the healing power of God. And before you need the other thing, God will touch your body. I know it. I received a phone call that blessed my socks off. I, years ago, I prayed for a little girl who had stomach cancer in the New England area. I'll tell you the church. It was tab uh, um, Tabernacle of Deliverance. I think that was the name of the church. And I went because it was a little girl who had stomach cancer who was at home and I think their relatives were at the church and they asked him either they asked me or I asked because the phone call I got from my friend David he was reminding me of that prayer that I prayed I went there no hair on her body sick nigh unto death she was a little girl laying on the counter they had her on the table and I went there and put my hands on her belly on her stomach and I prayed in the name of Jesus Christ. And the next report I got in two weeks, she was healed completely, uh, completely of cancer. All her hair grew back. 
and my friend David called me just the other day and left a message for me. She said, that, you know, that little girl you prayed for years ago. Well, let me tell you something. She is alive and running well and completely and totally still healed by the power of Almighty God. Don't you tell me that God doesn't do that today. And I'm saying, well, no, I don't want it. No, nah, I'm praying. And if nothing ever happened, which I believe it will, and it does, I will pray, pray, pray until my dying day. Hallelujah to God. Verse four, verse four again, Paul said John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. He told the people to believe in the one coming after him that is in Jesus. And we had hundreds of witnesses. There was a little boy that I prayed for in that same church. His daddy brought the baby up to me. He couldn't cry. He had no tear ducts. So he would just cry, but his eyes wouldn't water up. He couldn't cry. In the service we pray. In the Not afterwards. This is medically documented, and the parents will tell you. Tear ducts were formed, and he started to cry. Tears started coming out his eyes. Oh, God, I give you thanks. I praise you, Father. Thank you for doing those kinds of things because you love your people. And God looks for somebody to take him at his word. I'm going to read verse four again. Paul said John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. He told the people to believe in the one coming after him. That is in Jesus. Verse five, on hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them and they spoke in tongues and they prophesied. In other words, what happened? Their, their speech was renovated. They started talking about the things of God by the miracle working power of God. Verse eight, Paul entered the synagogue and spoke boldly. Did you hear it? Not timidly. Not with a question mark or a comma. He spoke boldly there for three months, arguing persuasively about the kingdom of God. I'll tell any pastor, I'll tell any church leader that the key to revival, the key to the move of God, the key to church growth is the word of God, not just famous personalities and not just innovation. Thank God he uses our personalities. And innovation is good. Do whatever program you have to. But if it is apart from the anointing and the Holy Ghost, listen, unless God built the church, this is the book of Psalms, they labor in vain that build it. But let God get a hold of that. Get a hold of that church. Get a hold of that body. Get a hold of that group of people. That's the solution. And I'm telling you, some of us have been missing it a mile. God is the God of increase. Paul said this in the third chapter of Corinthians. He said, Apollos water, we just mentioned his name. Apo I, I have planted, speaking of Paul, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Let me tell you something, sister and brother. Do what you know to do. When you pray, it's God who has to answer. He's the one who's, who gives the increase. He is the God of increase. We limit God because we limit our concept. We limit God because our minds are not renewed to his miracle working way. Don't you understand that? The church on, in America is powerless because we left the word of God. It's the word of God that stimulates the move of God. The knowledge of the word of God will heal your body and change your circumstances. And be this known unto you, yes, God allows us. Come on, Lady T. God allows us to go through the fire. He allows us to go through the shaking and the baking, the trial and the tribulation. He allows us to go through the wilderness, but not to stay there for the rest of our lives. He takes us in, deals with us while we're in, that we may grow, not to destroy us, but then he brings us out with more than what we started with. Do you hear me right now? That's what restoration is all about. That's why while we're going through, God wants us to grow through. And you grow through with the power of his word and the power of his spirit. One of the key phrases in this 19th chapter, the Bible says, mightily grew the word and prevailed. You can't have a church body without the word of God, without the spirit of God. You can have programs. You can have 
this, that, and the other thing. But when the word of God is declared, that's why I like to read. That's why I like to give so much scripture. Why? Because it is what God has obligated himself to, con to confirm. And I'm going to tell you something else. We're out of time now. We'll have to pick up from here next week. But we're going to have a good old time reading this chapter. You want to know what the devil is afraid of? You know what he's terrified of? He's terrified of God's word taking root in your soul, rising up and producing fruit. See, he don't care. As long as you're not in the word, it's okay. As long as you're not praying, it's okay. As long as you're depending on your own strength and not the strength that God gave you through the Holy Spirit, he'll just, he, he'll just, he, he doesn't care. But you let a few people start getting a hold of the word of God. I'm not talking about this is the only platform on the planet, but I'm here speaking the word of God and you're here listening to the word of God and we are growing and learning together. That's what the devil is afraid of. That's why you get, that's why there's so much trouble sometimes coming to the platform. Because Satan has got to, you, you're getting too deep into this thing. You're reading the Bible too much now. You're listening to the word too much. You want to know what kind of attacks I face after I deal with a Bible session like this? Or after I'm, or after I'm praying for someone? He will try to come at me from the north, south, east, and the west every way. I've got to have angels covering me. I've got to have the Holy Ghost watching my, wa watching my back and the blood of Jesus constantly washing me. And that's all of us. Don't you get nervous when you start getting attacks after you receive a good word from God. It's a backhanded compliment from the devil himself because he knows what God is about to do for you. And if the storms start raging, like all of a sudden, it means you are on the verge of a major breakthrough. It ain't time to quit. It's not time to give up. It's a time to go on. It's not a time for being weak. It's a time for being strong. It's not a time to lay down, bow down, and stay down. It's a time, according to the book of, uh, uh, book of Ephesians, to wake up to your righteousness, to wake up to the standard that God has given you, to wake up to who you truly are. That's why he attacks your family the way he does. That's why he give, tries to stimulate so many issues for you to worry about. God's got this. You need to tell the devil, God's got this. You need to tell your flesh, God's got this. You need to tell the elements, God has this. And I'm not giving up and I refuse to give in and I refuse to be afraid because I am the church. I'm a called out one. If the devil is not after you, you ain't doing nothing. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Amen. That's what it is. You're not persecuted for doing nothing. You're persecuted because of your stance in the kingdom of God. And can I tell you something? Persecution is not always somebody beating you with a whip and persecuting you and putting you in jail for preaching the gospel. Sometimes persecution is when you out of nowhere, you have a glass on the end of the table and then you knock the glass over and break it. That's frustrating. That's irritating. Or you happen to trip over something and hurt your foot or something. Do you know that's a form of persecution? Just to distract you, just to get you to worry. All of a sudden now you've got the sniffles and you know you got to speak. You know you got to do this. All of a sudden your eyes start watering and then these thoughts, oh, you probably got the virus. Oh, you probably have this. You probably have the flu. You're going to get to all these thoughts. It ain't nothing but backhanded compliments from Ephesians chapter 6. Uh, yes, that's right. From Ephesians chapter 6, um, uh, 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 we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. You walking, I'm walking down the street, crossing the street, and all of a sudden I slip on some mud, the driest day in history, and I'm slipping in a puddle of mud, feet go up in the air and break my shoulders. Well, I'm here to tell you that I did I did 300 jumping jacks today. I did 100 push-ups. The other day I did 1,000, and God is, my shoulders are getting stronger and stronger as the days go by, and I don't care what happens. I'm calling God's healing name upon every circumstance and situation. It's time for the church to rise up. Daughter of Zion, God is about to bless you with special favor. Son of Zion, God is about to special, uh, bless you with a new special favor upon your life.
And Lady T, God's going to give you favor on that job like you've never known before. And it's only going to be a precursor to other doors that God is about to open. And, and 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 when you and when you make a request, Lord, I thank you for medicine, but I don't want to have to deal with this kind of medicine. I want you to do this. When God heals you, there's no side effects. And we got to believe God for that. We don't quit because nothing happened. You keep on and you keep on talking to God and you keep on praying and you keep on thanking him and you keep on quoting that verse and believe God. That's what we need today. We need folk who believe God again. Daniel the prophet prophesied years ago that the day would come when there would be a body who, who, who would rise up and do exploits in his name because they would trust God. I am way over my time. Please forgive me. I must be a good student of the time that has, presented to, has been presented to us. So let's just, Lord, we thank you for your word and your encouragement tonight. Seal your truth in our lives and in our minds and in our hearts. Thank you for answering prayers all over this platform. Thank you for healing bodies. Touch your chest again, sister, brother. Be healed in the name of Jesus, of every skin issue, every immune deficiency issue in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Please pray for, yep, we, we prayed that. Yep, that this is what we're talking about. Yes, yes, yes. That's who I was talking about, uh, brother. God blessed her. Amen. She would be working. That's right. Amen. We already we we covered that. We already covered that. That's what I was talking about. When it's a precursor to other opening to other doors opening, and not only that, but when God opens a door for you, He anoints you. He gives you the favor to excel and progress. There will be challenging times. Listen, you can't grow without some pressure. But let me tell you something: the pressure is nothing when the promise is your best friend. And Lady T, the promise is your foundation covering you, watching your back, watching your front. And guess what? Your Father has given you favor and right there in the place you will excel, you will progress, you will be promoted and you will go on. You are blessed and you will become a blessing to many others. Hallelujah to the living God. Amen, amen, and amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit and the protection of the protection of of the uh, the angels and the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide upon you, the people of God, henceforth, now, and forevermore, your mind, your body, and your spirit, and your circumstances. Amen, amen, and amen. Listen, we're way over time. Just unmute. And if you got anything out of this tonight, can you just tell the Lord, thank you? Thank, thank you, Lord. Give him one thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Can you just thank give him one more? Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Thank you, Lord. 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 The Lord touches Thank your you, throat Jesus. right now. Be healed in your throat in Jesus' name. Yes. All right. Amen. Everyone have a blessed day. Have a blessed day.